What do you do if an exchange refuses your crypto, or worse, flags it as dirty and freezes your account? We're entering the era of blockchain surveillance where bots, not humans, are the ones that will determine whether your funds get to move or will be locked in your account. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to break down how this dystopian system works in plain English, how wallets get flagged, how the exchanges and blockchain surveillance tracks and traces your coins, and most importantly, what to do if your assets ever get stuck. Without further ado, let's get into it. First, let's break down why your coins can get flagged, even if you've done nothing wrong at all. You see, today, almost all centralized exchanges and some DeFi platforms as well, they've integrated AML bots into their systems. And these bots, they scan the transaction history of your coins from the very beginning. And if they're linked even loosely to something suspicious, even if you had no involvement in it, they can ask you for more information, known as know your transaction reports, or they can simply freeze your coins. Now, the average BBC viewer is going to say, well, good, this system is at least catching the criminals. It must have been something on the dark web, you know, Silk Road, maybe even money laundering. To you sheep, the average criminal does not go through these centralized exchanges because the crack vendor on the dark web does not want to A, go through KYC, and B, potentially get his coins frozen. Those who fall for the AML bots are almost always the average Joe who did not verify the source for their P2P transaction. They maybe went through some online casino that was unlicensed, unverified. Sometimes they fell for a scam. Or there have been cases where they owned Bitcoin for 15 years, now finally decided to move it, and yes, even that triggered the AML bot. And those exchanges, they're businesses. And all businesses can be coerced by the governments to do their bidding, like being watchdogs of the future digital gulag. Because they all require a license to operate. So if the government says jump, you have to say how high. You have to implement these AML bots and the KYC measures, or else you can be shut down, as we saw with XCH a few months ago. So basically, if you're gonna use a centralized exchange, just know that you are shooting yourself in the foot in the long term. The saying goes, not your keys, not your coins, for a reason. Not only can they go bust, but they can freeze your coins. I mean, they are subpoenable entities. They share information with the governments directly. Just check the terms of service. Now contrast everything that I've just said with how a criminal investigation is supposed to work, at least in practice. You have a crime that's committed, and then the police go out and try finding out who did it. That's the essence of due process. At least it used to be, now even that is getting eroded. But with blockchain forensics, it is backwards. First, they flag your coins before any crime has been proven. It's based on suspicion, basically, let's be safe than sorry. And they use the method of heuristics, which is a fancy word for saying an educated guess. They scan a massive amount of blockchain data, they look for patterns, and then an analyst is gonna make a judgment call. But that's all probability. It's not certainty. And if you know anything about criminal law, the standard of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt, which in simple terms would be like a 97% chance that the person is guilty. In fact, other forensic firms have straight up said that this technology should only be used to generate leads, not provide evidence. So the governments, they know damn well that this isn't about proving guilt. No, this is about mapping out the entire blockchain for this digital gulag and then making it almost impossible to off-ramp undeclared crypto. All of these chain analysis companies, they actually categorize the coins into two categories, KYC'd and undeclared. And then for all those undeclared crypto, they force the exchanges to put them on a risk score. The AML bot is then going to categorize the coin's transaction history into green for low risk, medium is yellow, and red is the highest risk. And if it's red, then based on the terms of service, the exchange or swap service can literally freeze your coins. Now, what gets you the red flag? It's almost always tied to darknet marketplaces or darknet services. Sometimes it's an online casino, it can be a scam wallet, 
a sanctioned country that it passed through, or a poorly run mixer. By the way, on the point of mixers, there are a few that are designed to bypass these AML bots, and the way they do it is they pull all the coins from centralized KYC exchanges, and they make sure that the dirty crypto never touches the clean outputs. So basically, there's a separation. There is a catch, though, in that the exchange accounts that are giving you the clean coins, they're almost always opened with fake documents or registered under some homeless person. So the moment that the exchange finds out that the KYC was faked, all of the transactions to all wallets, including yours, are going to be marked as suspicious. So you have to keep that in mind when dealing with any mixer service. Also, I want to dispel a common myth that only centralized exchanges implement these AML bots. Completely not true. There are many DeFi platforms that have them as a preventative measure. In fact, I mentioned one a few months ago, StealthX. It has worked well for us, and we like it because it accepts Monero, but it absolutely can give you a shotgun KYC if your coins score too high on their AML risk assessment. Then there are these non-custodial exchanges like Fixed Float, which quite frankly are giving false advertisement because they absolutely can freeze your coins and they collaborate with the FBI, as it was shown in the chain analysis video on Monero. It's even in their terms of service. What do you do if your coins are flagged? First, you want to find out why they got flagged in the first place. Was it because you moved your Bitcoin for the first time in 15 years? Was it some past P2P swap that was a bit shady? Did you use a darknet service? You can find out whether your crypto is dirty through these free AML bots online. Granted, they're not as good as Coinbase's or Kraken's, but they can give you a rough idea. Or you can send a small amount into a centralized exchange like Kraken or Coinbase, and if it gets rejected, you're pretty sure that it is dirty. Now, if you're absolutely certain that your coins are dirty, there's pretty much one option left, and that is to convert them into Monero. There's no such thing as a dirty Monero. They're all the same. They're fungible. They can't be traced. And then what you do to off-ramp it, we'll get into the better options later on. But a lot of people, they just say, screw it, I'm gonna go through a centralized exchange like Mexi, Kraken, or KuCoin. We wouldn't recommend you to do that because all of these exchanges, they automatically flag any Monero transactions that are recurring. And especially, of course, if you're gonna plow in some six or seven figures. Now, the best option is still a private OTC dealer talked about it previously in many videos because it's the gold standard for larger amounts. Whether it be Bitcoin, USDT, Monero, I'd still say that the global hub is Hong Kong. You're just going to get the best rates over there. You do need to visit in person because they're not going to trust you online. It's not something that you research on Google. Now, option number two is to use those peer-to-peer -peer decentralized no KYC exchanges. The first that come to mind would be RetoSwap, which is built on Haveno or BISC. The problem is liquidity. Almost nobody uses it. So if you have a large amount, say six figures and above, it's gonna take you a lot of time to off-ramp it. And that's why we would recommend you to also use intangent anonymous prepaid cards. Trocador, for example, for smaller amounts or for larger ones, you actually have offshore forums that sell large limit physical cards. They have a nominee, so your name isn't gonna appear on the debit card, it's not gonna appear on the transaction. They do cost more, but they take crypto directly. None of this, of course, solves the bigger issue, which is how do you explain the backstory for your money? If you ever get audited, if you get flagged, the first thing that they're going to say is, OK, explain away this transaction. A lot of people, they just simply ignore the step. And that's why we continuously emphasize on flexible accounting. Finally, here is our controversial take. In today's digital gulag, the goal is not to disappear. It's almost impossible to do. It's about becoming expensive to look into. And that's where we disagree with a lot of these privacy experts online. They say that you absolutely must use Linux. You have to get a hypervisor. You must use multiple virtual machines like Hunix and then transact Monero through these peer-to-peer, non-custodial, decentralized exchanges like RetoSwap and Haveno. And to that I say, if you're El Chapo, then sure, you absolutely have a reason to be paranoid, like most of the darknet marketplace vendors. But if you're the average Joe, 
This kind of OPSEC is almost impossible to maintain long term, especially if you're not Mr. Robot. So either if you have a lot of money, you hire a privacy expert, or you just do the simple things well, like use a VPN, only use Monero, and go through decentralized exchanges. And guess what? You are already far more private than most individuals. And just like any mafia, the government, it goes after the low-hanging fruit first. It goes after the easy money. It's the same thing in the offshore industry, which we know very well. You're not building multiple entities in different jurisdictions to become a financial ghost. That's almost impossible in today's day and age with common reporting standards and FATCA. No, you do that because it becomes very time-consuming, expensive. The governments that would have to request multiple MLATs, work with different countries, just to get to the ultimate beneficial owner. Personally, I think a lot of people got paranoid after Chainalysis released the video on Monero saying that it was compromised in some sort. Do you know how long it took them to actually track down those Colombians? And by the way, they only slipped up because they turned off their VPN for a split second. And how much time and money they spent on all those analysts to piece everything together. That's the point on the cost. By the way, we believe that Chainalysis released it for two reasons. One, to get IRS's reward on cracking Monero, which they technically didn't do. And secondly, in order to spread this false rumor that Monero has somehow been compromised. Listen, if you're the Bybit hackers, then sure, the feds are definitely after you. Because you stole a billion dollars. For the average crypto bro who may have six or seven figures of undeclared coins, you don't have to be a privacy geek in order to protect your wealth just have to do the simple things right. Anyway, I made a previous video on how second passports are basically just the badge of honor that you rent from a government. They can give it to you with one hand, take it away with another. That's it for today's presentation. I seriously want to thank all of you for the support you have given, and it's great to see that there are a lot of freedom-loving people like ourselves still around on the YouTube algorithm, but I'll be seeing you in a future presentation. Until then, bye-bye.